All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Star Trek Gangut. Uh, we are a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We're set in the year 2285 aboard a Constitution class refit. And if you want to catch our first VOD, you can catch that on my YouTube channel. Uh, with that said, let's go around and have everyone introduce themselves and their characters, starting with the captain. Hello, my name is Gerardo, and I'm playing Captain Caetano Deca. All right, up next, we uh, have a first officer. Yep, my name is Drone, and I'm playing Commander Savark. And then uh, Talkath. You are muted. Hello, I am... Hello, I am Talon. I I play science officer Lieutenant Talkoff Odd. And then our engineer. Hello, I'm Decca. I'm playing Lieutenant Junior Grade Slaw. And last but not least, our lovely security officer. I'm Ben, and I am playing Lieutenant Junior Grade the Canner. All right. And with that, let's go ahead and run our introduction. And welcome back. So uh, if this is your first time on one of my streams or recordings, something I like doing is having the players do an opening log. So Captain, I believe you have a supplemental one today. Yes, I do. <clears throat> Captain's log, supplemental. We received a distress call from a planet called Riku. There, a certain colony was having issues with rock beasts attacking their power plants. After we successfully averted their first onslaught, we recovered some unsettling truths about them. We discovered some unsettling truths about them. They were purposefully brought to this planet and were being controlled by a substance usually found in crystal form. We also found out that General Zostabia, the head of, the, of their defense forces, had links to an extremist environmentalist group, which led us to believe that he might be involved. Our plans at the moment are to launch an away team to track the rock beasts and analyze them while another visits the crystal planet's crystal mines to investigate if that substance was being mined here. Maybe I should talk to Governor Tiru Mushe, but I'm not sure how to approach the situation. Alrighty. So our first scene is actually going to be in, well, let me ask this, because we do have different away teams going on. Uh, who would be taking a shuttle and who would be beaming down? And I guess I'll, I'll put us here so we can uh, arrange our characters as needed. So who's in the first away team going to the mines? That would be. You want to go to the you want to go to the mines or the the rock beasts fig. Uh, mines. Okay. Okay. So we'll put you over then, here. Yes, Commander Sovak, and our good Lieutenant Thakaner. Okay. So that's team uh, mines, and then who's going for the rock beasts themselves? Uh, I believe I was assigned to go to a rock beast. Yes, <laughs> and since Shita Chaudhry, she will be piloting the shuttle. Okay. And Lieutenant Niripugal. Okay. 
as an engineer. Let's put them over here. All right, so if I understood that correctly and I didn't just have a brain fart, uh, the mine team is transporting down? Yep. Yes. Correctly. All right. All right. So, uh, Savak, the canner, Fig, uh, you all beam down, and when you do so, uh, you materialize on the outskirts of what looks to be a large strip mine. So there's basically a rock face that has been almost sheer cut uh, as they just continually do like strips across the mountainside. And you see all manner of heavy machinery, uh, large dump trucks, large... Um, I'm trying to remember what that really big drill is, the one with the, the really large head... Um, but basically you see a lot of mining equipment is what I'm getting at. Um, and the Saurians, when they notice that you have more or less appeared in their midst, um, one of them, you know, gets out of his truck, walks over to you and says, uh, hello, uh, can I, can I help you? Uh, Savak gives a salute and, um, says, uh, Yes, uh, my name is Commander Sovak from the USS Gangoot. Um, I'm here with my colleagues to uh, conduct a survey of your mining operations. Uh, just taking a look and seeing what's uh, what's been going on here. We've spoken with your governor and um, yeah, thought it might be interesting to inspect the operations that you have running. And uh, their large eyes sort of narrow at you and they say, you've spoken with Governor Tarumshe? Yes, and also with uh, General Zatabia. And uh, so Sovak sort of gets a little bit serious and says, um, who, who has also given his blessing for our, our um, operation. I see. And, you know, he kind of looks over the away team. You know, takes uh all of you in. Of course, we uh, will not be getting in your way or anything like that. Consider us uh, not even here. We are just passive observers. Well, notes and then going on our way. I would like you to roll me an insight and command, please, Mr. Sovak. Yep. Uh, difficulty of one. Does anything like negotiation or diplomacy come into it? Um, this would be more people reading. So if, if you have anything related to the study of people, uh, study of emotions, I would say that this would apply. Cultural studies? I'll give you cultural studies, sure. And the default dice pool is 2d20, right? Correct. What's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty was one, so he does pass. So... You know, Saurians are hard to read because they are sort of lizard-like and they do have, um, to put it lightly, they are very skittish. Um, but when you sort of study this individual that's walked up to you, maybe the foreman, maybe just a general worker, uh, what you're noticing is that they are, for lack of a better term, they're almost frightened of you. Fascinating. But uh, they sort of look behind them, uh, shout something uh, in a language that does not translate. And there's a responding shout from another vehicle. And uh, the individual turns back to you all and says, uh, right, okay. Um, you're all going to need hard hats. Uh, how many of them are there, like on the work side? Or is it like so huge that you can't really see? It's large enough that to get an appropriate head count you would probably have to scan it from orbit kind of a thing what's like the technology level on this site yeah uh so if you will imagine um almost modern day like today modern equipment um it's definitely not uh quote unquote futuristic um it is definitely more of a early 2020 sort of feel to it um, which means that, you know, maybe the only difference is that instead of it being like gas or coal powered, like they're using some renewables fuel source, but the general concept is the same. You've got one large driller, 
Uh, you have several dump trucks that are just basically mass conveyors. Um, I would say the one thing that might stand out to you is that even by this time in the Star Trek universe, usually drilling is done with drill with is not done with drills. It's done by lasers, but you're seeing actual drills here or actual sort of rotating heads. Uh, so they are less technologically inclined. is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Is he going to uh, offer us hard hats or do we have to requisition some of our own? Uh, he's sort of mo like, if you start asking the question, he'll like motion over to a building that is sort of at the quote unquote entrance to the quarry. Uh, and he says, uh, you can get hats over there. Uh, oh, uh, make sure you check in with the foreman too. Uh, his, his name is, uh, and he spits out a, uh, Saurian word that does not translate. And he says, sorry, uh, we, we've been having strange problems with our universal translator. Um, I believe you could call him Richardson and without even really saying anything else, he turns and goes back to his truck very awkwardly. Um, but one thing that should stand out immediately, Richardson is not a Sarian name. Is that just because he's not? Oh, I mean, we'll find out, but is it like a universal translator problem or is it, did he just say the word Richardson? Like it's, it's an actual name. Could be either one. Know. Okay. Yep, then we'll go check it out. We'll go check in with the foreman. All right. I think. Um, unless you guys want to do anything before we do that. Mm. Are there any guards or like security personnel that, like, especially on a on a uh, location like this, you there there should be a security like outpost or something normally at least. Uh, why don't you roll me an insight security difficulty of one. <laughs> Inside security. And if you have any focuses regarding to observation, uh, security procedures, things of that nature, that would apply. I, I, I don't believe that I have any, so. Okay. So. One success is all you need. So, you know, you're looking around the work site. You're not really seeing anyone visibly armed. You know, like nobody's walking around carrying a rifle or no one's like menacingly sweeping over the workers with a phaser. You know, nothing like that. Um, in fact, really, the only sort of security that you're seeing is that uh, there are cameras on poles every so often. Um, but they're, they're usually just lights with cameras. They're not like armed turret cameras, if that makes any sense. Like they are just sort of very lax in their security procedures. Um, really the most security that you're seeing is the building that you have been directed to. And that's because there is a, one of those old style, like swing up gates that lets vehicles in and out. It's like a, it's like a gatehouse is I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, besides that, there's not a whole lot of security here. Hmm. Didn't they seem, kind of, sorry, uh, uh, the counter would turn to, uh, commander Sovak and, and, uh, He'll just, like as they're walking away, like, didn't it seem like there was supposed to be some kind of uh, hesitance for the uh, for them to reveal this mining location, if I recall correctly? So why is it not as secure? Yes, the general and uh, Dr. Kamein Hai we're somewhat reluctant to admit the existence of these mining camps. So it is quite interesting to me that they are so comparatively unarmed. Um, Lieutenant, I would advise that you uh, be cautious and keep an open eye. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I look at them with kind of like a, a an exasperated look and I kind of look around and I say, and I go, I mean, this is not very impressive. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Slal, do you see any reason why they might not be using more modern mining technology? Uh, they seem to no. be relying on drills. 
no, this is, uh, this makes no sense to me. Why would, why they would use so, such like wasteful methods? I mean, no, I can't imagine a reason why it's like this. Mm -hmm. Could it have something to do with the nature of the mineral that we inspected on the Gangut? Maybe some sort of sensitivity to a laser drill or something that would require a more manual drilling process? I, I reckon this is more of a matter of, um, this is perhaps not uh, legally um, acquired or they are just idiots. I mean, a lot, a lot of things can be explained that way. I feel like if this wasn't legally acquired, there would have been a lot more um, hesitance uh, for them to allow us to speak with the foreman. And I think there would be more, uh, more security as well. Usually, criminals try not to uh, try not to um, you know, make their presence so plainly known. But usually, criminals steal like valuable stuff. This is not very valuable. Mm. If wow. I look at this, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go. Oh wow! I need to steal this. I think we have many questions for the foreman. Let's proceed uh, mm -hmm. to the gatehouse. All right. And as you all are walking to the gatehouse, we're going to transition to the other away team. So uh, the three of you pile in to your shuttle, and uh, you pilot it out of the Gengut shuttle bay and begin descending the uh, down into the atmosphere of the planet. And uh, I would normally make you roll for this, but you already have three momentum, so I think you're good there. Uh, so the flight down, very simple, no problems. And my question is, first off, who is actually playing the pilot? Is anyone playing the pilot? I can I can play the pilot. Okay. But we need someone playing the new Hippogal on engineering. All right, yeah, so let's figure that out real quick. So who's taking the engineering supporting character and who's taking the pilot? Can literally Please, be not anyone. all at once. I'm taking one of those. Lieutenant Fig, perhaps. Yeah, I could do the pilot. Okay. All right, so uh, apparently the token, I've dragged like three, to, oh, it's because she doesn't have a token. I was like, why is she not showing up? My bad. I tried to find one. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. We'll figure it out later. Uh, but uh, Chaudhry, Enshin Chaudhry, uh, I have an important question for you. Um, as far as your readings of the Rock Beast is concerned, and this would have been something you would have, if you didn't get it last session, you would have gotten it in the interim. Um, there's three major areas where the Rock Beasts are located. Um, there are... Uh, there is, I should say, there is a mountain range on the southern continent. There seems to be a, a nest of some sort there, or at least a grouping of signals. Um, there is the one that you guys scared off. It's now somewhat deep into the ocean, but you could go check it out nonetheless. And then there is another one that is sort of walking across the desert plains of the northern continent. So you have three different areas you could potentially check out. And my question is, which would you want to go to first? Uh, Lieutenant Pugal, uh, could you could you please tune the Tetron harmonic controller to focus on the one in the ocean, please? Oh, what's your idea with this? And I'm beginning doing it. We want to... We'll, if we just if we track back the one that we have just scared off, maybe we can get an idea of where it is actually where it is actually heading off to. Since that's the one that most recently came to visit, now it's probably going to head back to its habitat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. And then, and then we can track their Tetrion emissions. I like it. All right. If you would roll me a reason science, Miss Pugal, uh, difficulty of two. Remember, you do have three momentum at the moment. Yes, I. I can actually will... help out with this, if you, if you like some assistance. Yes, that would be very helpful. 
then I will I will help out I will help out with this with the scan. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually new with this, so that's quite all right. So reason science for the yes. assist is one is one d twenty, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, there's your assist. Wait. Uh, oh. one more die. Yeah, you would still roll yeah, another I, die. I I would I, I was gonna spend the momentum, but I pressed the wrong buttons. A reason. And science, the dice pool is just another die. Three successes, okay. you guys get a point of momentum. So uh, what you're detecting, and I'll actually sort of push us onto this map as I grab all of your tokens. Uh, you actually managed to uh, locate the creature as it's sort of trudging out to sea. Um, if it wasn't already clear, these beasts are massive. And that means that they are tall enough or large enough that even in the depths of the ocean, um, they are able to walk on all fours, or at least the four that this has. And as you're scanning, um, what you realize is that in terms of structure, in terms of, shall we say... Um, composition um what you're noticing is that something is wrong with the crystal on its head and you already had an inkling that the crystal on its head was involved in some way but let's say for argument that before you were uh detecting we'll say tetrions or some form of radiation coming from the crystal now the crystal is dormant so you're not actually getting Tetrion emissions. Mm. Mm. So I'm not getting anything, which is very weird. It should be sending something. Should I fly in closer or? You certainly may. How close do you want to get? I mean, he's pretty slow, right? Yeah, big old lumbering so, kaiju type thing. Yeah it's, yeah, it's very slow moving. So I reckon I could keep like, if I could get closer to the kind of crystal and kind of just hover in front of him. Okay. About like 10 meters. 10 meters. All right. I would say that would probably call for a daring con, please. <gasps> Difficulty okay. of two. Uh, I'm just going to suggest that you take a momentum. You spend yeah, momentum yeah. That. That, that, sounds, um, that sounds good. Yeah, we don't want to run up to our max if we, we don't want to have to overflow. Mm-hmm. So just do a roll with three dice? Yeah, three dice. Aye. All right, interesting. Only one success there. Uh, so what's going to happen is the shuttle banks towards the creature. And you get closer and closer and closer. And maybe you just overestimate how fast you're going or you underestimate I should say and it ends up being that at the very last moment you literally bounce off the creature's head with the shuttle and there's a cacophonous clanging sound as you do so um, and as the shuttle is violently lurched to the side um, you do manage to not to be like bug on a windshield type thing but you definitely have taken damage to the shuttle as you fly back out. And we'll say, for sake of argument, about 20 meters away now. Sorry about that. Ugh, what happened? <laughs> I, I underestimated the speed of this 
this creature, I think. Yeah, they're deceptively fast. <laughs> but uh, and I'm gonna, I want to see if there's damage on uh, damage to the shadow. Sure, roll me a uh, reason engineering difficulty of one. Did I click on cancel? I did. Three oh, successes, okay. very nice. You get two momentum. So I have good news and I have bad news. Which would you like first? Go ahead. Take it. Pick your poison. <laughs> bad news. Uh, that little stunt, I guess you could call it, um, you are actually losing power to your thrusters, meaning that if you do not depart back up to the ship, like, now, now, you're not going to be able to get back up to the ship, meaning that you are going to have to crash land somewhere. The good news is that this creature is so large that you could conceivably land on its back if you so wished. I would propose that we land on its back. We need to have an understanding of where it's actually heading towards. Your bow, Talkath. But well, you outranked me, so go ahead. You're in charge here. All um, right. I will land on some uh, at least decently flat section of its back. All right. And as you're landing, we're going to go to the other group. So we'll put you back on this map for now. And uh, uh, in terms... I have a quick question on this tr transition. Yes. So do I get my determination at the start of the session? or uh, At it... the start of the session, yes. But it is only for characters with a value. So yeah, your supporting no. character does not have a determination right now. Yeah, I, I was asking for my my main character, the captain. Ah, yes, the captain the does one, have a determination. The momentum can be spent even if they're not in the same scene. Yeah, uh, the momentum is a shared pool across all scenes, all characters. Yes, thank you. Of course. I'm sorry for the. No, you're fine. I'd rather you ask the question than uh, you know worry. Can I do this kind of a thing? All right. Uh, so the other the other part of the away mission uh, is Savak the Canner Fig. You guys finally arrive at the guardhouse slash I guess you would call it mining cantina. And when you walk in, uh, what you see is a bunch of Saurians, uh, literally just you know having something to drink, having something to eat. And as soon as you walk in, and people start to notice you. They, like, stop mid-motion. Like, there's even one that has, like, a comically oversized spoon with food on it that just kind of looks at you. Like, mm -hmm. what are they here for? Um, yes. But what really catches all of your attention is there is a single human here. Probably Richardson, because he walks up to you. You know, he stands up from his table, walks over to you, and says, uh, hello, um... Starfleet, I was not expecting you. And to give you a description of Richardson, he looks to be a middle-aged uh, male, uh, maybe from an Asiatic descent. Um, probably has a, a very nice goatee, like a Fu Manchu even going on. Um, has sort of grayed hair. So it's, it's almost like mine or the captain's, if you imagined it speckled with more gray. Um... And he has lines on his face that would suggest that he has been a working man, as in he's very used to manual labor, the quote-unquote blue-collar type work kind of a thing. Um, but he walks up to you and says, all right, uh, hello, I'm Foreman Richardson. Uh, what, what, what can we do for you, Starfleet? Uh, greetings, Foreman Richardson. Uh, we're here to take an inspection or, or a very passive inspection of your mining operations after uh, hearing of it with great interest from the governor and uh, General Zatabia. Uh, I have a few questions if you don't mind us inquiring. Of course. Uh, would you like this to take place in private or uh, will this table here suffice? And he points at a nearby table. 
Hmm. Good question. Um, I wouldn't want to interrupt your, your men during their meal. Um, so I think a, a, a private office or a, a more secluded location might be preferable. Of course, if you'll follow me to my office then. And uh, okay. he leads you through the cafeteria, through a door on the other side, and you emerge into a corridor that has very various branching rooms, and you maybe catch a snippet as you walk past them. They're basically barracks, or where the miners sleep. And eventually you arrive at a small office with the four of you just barely fitting inside. Uh, it's pretty much the foreman has a chair, one of you has a chair, and then two other people are left standing kind of a thing. It's a very cramped office. Um, but uh, as he sits down behind the large wooden desk, uh, he says, so um, where would you like to begin? I didn't get your names. Oh, of course. Uh, my name is Commander Sovak, uh, first officer of the USS Gangoot, and I will let my team introduce themselves. Uh, perhaps starting with Lieutenant Thakander. I am uh, Lieutenant uh, Junior Grade uh, Ash Thakander, uh, Security. Lieutenant Junior Grade Slal, uh, Engineering. And Richardson's gaze lingers on you, Slal, for a moment. And he says, so, uh, Tellerite, huh? Worked with a Tellerite before. What, do you, uh, what would you say is your honest opinion of our uh, operation here? Uh, probably the, the worst I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I, I don't think I've ever even seen, like, this bad of a mining operation on, I mean, any kind of entertainment ever. I mean, it's... Com almost comedically bad. High praise coming from a Tellerite. I'll take it. So, Commander Savak, I believe you had questions for me. Of course. Um, yes, uh, some some basics out of the way first. Just wondering how, how long your mining operation has been around and, and what exactly it is you're prospecting for. Well, uh, the operation here is actually a fairly new one. Uh, we only started it about eight months ago. And what we're mining is a rare form of trilithium. Ah, trilithium. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, that is a very unstable compound. Indeed. And that is why, and he looks very pointedly at Slaw, that is why we're not as advanced as you might like, because we want to use equipment that won't accidentally set off the trilithium. Well, yeah, if, but I reckon if you had a better grasp of what you were doing, you would find other ways of doing that. Again, high praise coming from a Tellerite. <laughs> <laughs> so Savaka as a player knows what trilithium can be used for, uh, but I don't think Sovak himself does. He just knows that it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I will ask then again, um, what exactly is it that the trilithium is being used for on this colony? Well, uh, we actually don't keep the trilithium here on the colony. We actually sort of sell it uh, on the side, if that makes any sense. It's sort of our, I guess you would call it a bread basket. I see. Hmm. Interesting. I kind of just take out a tricorder and start kind of scanning the area real quick. Okay. Uh, what are you looking for in particular? Uh, I'm looking for uh, especially um, like how safe this place is. Okay. Uh, I think the canner could probably help you here. So Slaw, why don't you roll me a reasons, a reason engineering. Uh, the canner, why don't you roll me a reason security assist? Okay. Which and the difficulty, difficulty on this is going to be a two. Please. Um, hmm. Yeah, we have plenty of momentum if we want to use some. Hmm. All right, well, there's two already. Figure out if I've got a focus for that. Uh, no, I don't think uh, any of them would. Nope. All right. Well, hey, two successes is all you need. 
So again, I have good news and bad news. Which would you like first? Bad first. So the bad news is that for those of you that know what trilithium is, it is a experimental compound at this stage in Star Trek universe, meaning that its greater uses haven't really been explored. But what you do know is that there are these massive sort of warehouse containers, vats, whatever you want to flavor them as. They are beneath the ground where they're storing the trilithium, but they're not storing it in crystal form. They're storing it in resin form. And what you know about the resin, at least based on your scans, is that it's a highly toxic substance, as in handling it and otherwise refining it, quote unquote. This is not something they should be doing. I try very hard to hold my tongue, but I kind of nudge at the first officer like... <laughs> I uh, since, I, since, since I was assisting, do I also gain this knowledge, or is it you do? Yes. Okay. Um, the canner would just be like, uh, "Why are you using the uh, storage process that you are uh, currently using?" Well, uh, by refining it on site, we reduce the capability of it to shall we say explode violently I let out like a tiny kind of uh. <laughs> and have there been any incidents of explosions in, in this camp or others like it in this camp no we have followed safety procedures to the letter in fact that's why I'm the foreman they quite literally contracted me as outside help to make sure that their third attempt at mining something like this did not go off without a hitch. I no, think I said that right. Stand to reason that attempts one and two were not so fortuitous. I believe you could even see them from orbit if you catch my meaning. Understood. One further question, if I may, uh, Foreman. Is this operation private or is it under the sanction of the government of this planet? Uh, it is under the sanction of the government. I do have the proper paperwork if you would care to inspect it. I don't believe that'll be necessary, but thank you for being so forthcoming. Of course. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, hard hats. <laughs> right, hard hats. Uh, well, you're going to go back out into the cafeteria. You're going to hang a left, and you're going to uh, see what is essentially a locker room. Just grab whatever hats are hanging on the hooks. Thank you for your uh, your straightforwardness, Mr. Foreman. Um, if you don't mind, we will uh, don our hard hats and protective gear and just have a look around um, and stay out of your hair, and then we'll, we will be on our way. And as you do that, we're going to transition back to the other away team. So at this point, uh, Talkath, uh, Chaudhry, Pugal, you've all settled down onto the back of the beast, and as you do so, uh, it is not a moment too soon because there is a sputtering whine as the main engine cuts off completely. So you are currently without power or means of really doing anything with your shuttle. Good news, your tricorders still work, though. So you've got that going for you. Uh, do we have the ability to engage the tracking transponder that will relay our position? I would say, yeah, you can get communication back up to the gang good if need be. All right. Uh, Ensign Chaudhry, please engage the tracking transponder. Let's have let's have the gang good know where we are at all times, so that way, if that way, if we still can't get off, we can still have a ride home. Will do. Um, I think I should maybe try to get this working again. That will probably be for the best. In the meantime, let's learn all that we can about this creature while we're on it. Uh, okay. Well, I happen battles. to be an excellent mountain climber, so... 
I can somewhat fly. I try to <laughs> flap my wings, but it's a little strained. <laughs> we'll walk. It's fine. All right. So we'll say for sake of argument, you pop open the back hatch of the shuttle and there's almost a sudden or not a sudden, but a subtle rise and fall as the creature lumbers forward. Uh, it's maybe about every two minutes. There's sort of an undulation where that you go up a little bit and then you feel the ground moving beneath you and then you go back down and you sort of you sort of do a wave motion, if that makes sense. Um, but as you're walking around on the creature's back, um, we'll have Talcath here. Talcath, I'd like you to roll me a reason and medicine, please. Okay. Oh, he's good. Uh, nope, I have nothing that can be done. Ah, two successes. Ah, well, I forgot to tell you it was a two success thing, so there you go, two successes. So, as seems to be the theme today, I have good news and I have bad news. <laughs> Which would you like? Is there worse news as well? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, let's start with the bad news. Bad news. The creature is putting off a tremendous amount of pheromones. And though you're not in any danger right now, that's the good news. If you stay too long on this creature's back, there is the possibility of the pheromones affecting not only you, but the rest of the away team. Uh, everyone, uh, requisition some respirators. We're going to, the longer that we're here, the longer that we're at risk of the pheromone. Pheromones, huh? Pharaoh what? The pheromones that this thing is emitting could affect us. I do not have an exact time limit. Do I actually know an exact time? Yeah, you've got about three hours. Uh, so everyone said your tricorder is for three hours. That's how long we have. Three hours? I cannot fix this in three hours. I have to maintain oh. engineering traditions. <laughs> I, can, I can help out with that in a little bit. I can give you any assistance that you need, but um, I, I'll try to do it alone. You can, you, 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 I think maybe inspecting this creature while we're at it is the better way. That way, we don't get pheromoned for nothing. That's probably for the best then. Uh, and send you with me. Let, let us go ahead. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try to find what we can find out. All right. And uh, Chaudry, I'd like Chaudry to roll me a fitness medicine, please. Difficulty of one. Oh no! Oh, it started already. Oh no! Uh, I two. That's yeah. one. That's one. Is, and a D twenty. Yeah. That was a reason? Fitness, Fitness medicine. medicine. Fitness medicine. Oh, good lord. Just don't roll a 20. <laughs> there you go. You didn't uh, roll a 20. All right. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Carry on. So my All question right. is, is where are you going to start, Talcath? Are you going to take literal rock samples? Are you going to take samples of the pheromones? Like, where are you beginning? Uh, let's start with the actual pheromone samples. Okay. That way we can try to synthesize some sort of antidote later. Okay. Uh, roll me a control and a science, please. Difficulty of two. And to keep things interesting, I'll spend a little bit of threat here to make the complication range in 18 to 20. Uh, then let me adjust, let me adjust my character sheet here real quick. So 18 to 20, you said? Yeah, the character sheet doesn't handle that. It's something I handle on my end. Oh, it has, it has a oh, because I saw the sheet has a complication range, so I can set that up there. Yeah, don't worry about that. I just look at the dice uh, manually. Okay, so yeah, let's Please. spend the momentum. Let's spend momentum. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's Go spend ahead. two momentum. 
just in so case. do you want so you want to roll four dice basically yeah let's roll four dice then it would be three total momentum so you need to give me another momentum oh and oh i only have two mo we oh we would need one more then yeah i mean but you have three so yeah can i use that one more momentum guys so someone delete the momentum there we go there we go cool. so so control control medicine mm-hmm and we're at 4d20, right? Correct. Okay. And I have no applicable focus to this. Nope. Okay. Hey, four <laughs> successes. Very nice. You get two momentum right back. Yeah. Uh, you had the foresight to bring along sampling equipment with you. And sure enough, you are able to get what is essentially a clear vial, uh, maybe about the size of a... Uh, Small glass bottle, basically. You know, we have visual examples. A bottle about this size. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the interior of the bottle is a sort of pinkish gas um, that sort of the more sam- the more the sample you collect, the more vibrant and the more noticeable it is. Like when you first took your first sample, you know, clear glass didn't see anything. But the more you take, the more it becomes prevalent. And... By the time the glo- the bottle is filled, um, what you're noticing is that looking around you, you're now seeing that the pheromones are visible, like the very beginning stages of when you started to harvest. So perhaps there's something more at play here, if that's what I'm trying to get at. Hmm. Is there any way to get inside the rock beast from where we're at? <laughs> um, I would say you're not seeing any apertures. You're not seeing any quote-unquote, caves on its back at the moment. Are you expecting an elevator? Yeah, I was going to say, you know. I'm I, I, right I just expecting, like, maybe some sort of natural formation that some natural chinks in the armor or such. Take some mining equipment. I tell you what, if you give me two momentum, I will say that there is what appears to be a cave opening you could check out. <laughs> All right, we have two momentum given, so yes. You see, uh, during this whole process, you see that there is a cave entrance, and if you stray by it, uh, what you're feeling is the subtle pull and push of air. So, I would say probably, without even needing to roll, this is essentially its blowhole, like if on a whale or a dolphin. This is what it's breathing through. Uh, Lieutenant Pugal, what do you think? Should we go inside this thing? Try to see what we can learn Learn via um, internal medicine. Uh, uh, I, you know what? Possibly, but the thing is, if the blowhole is here, then the creature is breathing out this pheromone. It's breathing out. So you're suggesting that maybe. Yes. I think that maybe it's secreting it naturally. I'm not sure it's secreting it. That's the thing. Because we know it's pheromones, but we're not sure it's the pheromones from the creature itself. What we can infer from that opening is that it's breathing the pheromones, the same pheromones we're breathing now, and we have only three hours to go. How, how long has it been breathing this. I don't know. I wonder where these pheromones are created. Uh, we'll have to. We'll have to take this. Well, I'll probably have to take some H samples. Um, let's get some rock samples and then head back and assist uh, Pugal with assist uh, Pugal with any any repairs okay. that she needs. All right. We can and we can revisit this later. As you all are walking back, I need Chaudhry and Talcath. Need a fitness medicine difficulty of one. Mm-hmm. And that's for each of you. All right, well, Talcath gets you uh, two momentum. Cool. Chaudhry gets you one as well. That's a total of three momentum. You guys are fine. Don't worry about it. You're fine. But uh, as you all walking back, we're going to look very briefly at uh, Pugal, then we're going to go back to the other away team. Uh, so, Pugal, I'd like you to roll me an insight engineering uh, difficulty of two to see what you can make of the repair work you have to do. Okay. Insight engineering. 
Uh huh. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend one momentum at least. Okay. And insight engineering. That's three dice. And no focus. Ooh, interesting. Ooh. So you are gonna get a momentum, but there is a complication. And that complication is going to be you're gonna hate me for this, but uh, as you are looking over the shuttle, you realize that you're pretty much going to have to replace the starboard nacelle. But that's oh. not your biggest concern right now. Your biggest concern is that there's a sudden almost earthquake, quote unquote, as the creature lurches to the left. And your shuttle, uh, luckily you're outside of it, the shuttle flips on its side and tumbles over close to the edge. It's now on its roof close to the edge of the beast. Oh. So it hasn't fallen off yet. <laughs> oh, no. uh, please remember, oh. we can use momentum to cancel out threats next time. Yeah, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> well, where's the, f where's the fun in the, in, the, in, the way, in the other way team being able to leave this beast? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. But as you all are dealing with that, let's cut back to the mining away team and see how they're doing. So uh, tell me, what are you guys looking for as you are moving around and more or less checking out the dig site? Are we being escorted or do we have sort of a free run of the place? I'd say you maybe have a shadow or two, but they're not like following you per se they're just basically making sure that you're not messing with any equipment or messing with any of the operations here so as long as okay. you don't do that you just pretty much have free run of the place so they're the escort is probably out of your shot like we can speak yeah openly. you can speak freely okay um yes uh lieutenant the canner lieutenant slal do you have any thoughts on the matter before we uh we proceed with with our investigation <laughs> i don't know Sorry, what was that? Uh, if you could repeat yourself there, Fig, yeah. you uh, cut out on my end a little bit. Oh, uh, let's just be uh, maybe a little quick here. That's all. That's all I have to say right now. Yeah, I think the chances of the camp exploding under our feet are are very slim, Lieutenant Slaw. There's nothing to worry about there, I would assume. But there's a chance. It may be slim, but there's still a chance. <laughs> Uh, the main thing would be to uh, make sure we move with extreme care if we reach any section where they're storing the uh, trilithium. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that would be a prudent suggestion. I would also suggest that we look into how they are moving the stored trilithium out of this camp, um, because the foreman did mention that they are selling it. So I would be very interested to know. Uh, perhaps if any buyers are here or have been here and if we can ascertain who they might be. Um, this substance is very unstable. I, of course, don't know uh, all that it is capable of, but I do know, obviously, that it is highly explosive. And uh, the usage for such highly explosive material can, can lead us in several different directions. So um, at that, I think we would just... Uh, Sort of walk around, survey everything, maybe uh, take a, a general, yeah, I mean, b b show an interest basically in how the thing is packaged, um, how the, the resin is being brought up from underground from the storage, and if they have any kind of like a loading dock or anything like that, and um, maybe seeing who they're loading this off to. Is it transports owned by them? Is it transports owned by somebody else? How are they getting it out? Let's see. Um, so what you would see is as you are walking around, uh, what the first part of that is, how are they transporting it? It seems that they are storing about half of the uh, ore uh, into a container, just a regular storage container, corrugated metal, nothing fancy. Um, the other half is being put into what are essentially big old barrels, like oil barrels. barrels. They're just big old drums of metal. Uh, maybe holds about 55 yeah. gallons of the stuff. And in the time in that you've form. been here... Oops, sorry, go ahead. In resin form. In resin form, correct. Um, 
in the time that you've been here, it's been long enough that you have seen at least one transport. It's a Saurian transport. Very, uh, It's an atmospheric shuttle, not meant for space flight, just between atmosphere. Um, one has come and landed on the outskirts of the settlement. And then a pair of Saurians then wheel over two barrels of the resin loaded onto the craft. The craft takes off and it heads to parts unknown. So only two barrels, not not like a massive amount of the stuff, or is that like roughly what the what the transport can carry? That's about what the transport can carry. It's a very small transport. Um, I would think more, think of it more like a uh, a helicopter, let's say. Mm-hmm. So very uh, very small atmospheric craft, uh, not really meant to carry a whole lot at once. And beyond the fact that it's it's sorry and there's no markings on it or anything like that. Correct. Hmm. Lieutenant the Canner, if one were to, hypothetically speaking, wish to, uh, and then I raise an eyebrow because this this may not be the most by the book move for me. Uh, if one were to want to track one of these transports, how might one do so? Hmm. I might suggest uh, either uh, sending a message up to the uh, Gangut so that we could get a a estimated trajectory in which direction they're headed, plus uh, either getting a tracker into one of the, uh, onto one of the barrels, or maybe uh, go investigate when one of the uh, transports arrives and slip one into the transport itself. Mm-hmm. So my goal, so out of character, my goal with this is just to see where this all is ending up in. Is it being like, is it actually being sold or is it being sent to like an explosives plant or something like that? Something that refines it into a weapon? Mm-hmm. Um, because we do know that the general obviously has in his past terrorist uh, ties mm-hmm. and sympathy. Um, so with that, I guess, uh, yeah, I'll switch back into character. Um, those both seem like very prudent options, Lieutenant. Um, I will raise the Gangut and appraise them of the situation um, and inform the captain and see if they are able to track these transports using the ship's sensors. Um, if you and Lieutenant Slaw could perhaps rig a tricorder or a communicator to act as a, a uh, transponder device, um, once we've done that, then we can proceed accordingly. And so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do the communicator thing. I don't know if you want me to just do that sort of off camera, you know, Savak to, to Gangut, and then I walk out of the frame or something um, while while they maybe uh, proceed with, with that, if that's something that you guys want. Well, first, Sorry I have trumpets. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's the charge of the Valkyries. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me... Uh... Uh... Let's actually do your, your conversation with the captain, because I think there's merit in seeing that conversation play out. Okay. Um, Savak to Gangut. This is Gangut. Go ahead, Savak. Captain, we've come across a very interesting development in the mining camp. It seems the colonists are mining a component known as trilithium, uh, which has apparently very explosive side effects. Um, I'm not entirely uh-huh. sure what they're used for, but this, uh, this is something that I think worth noting. And I would like to request your permission to track the trilithium shipments. Yes. Anything else, Lieutenant? Because only the trilithium is explosive or not, it's fine. The, the race is allowed to have weapons and to build them. Even so, I, I fail to see the logic in a relatively peaceful colony uh, mining what is potentially an extremely hazardous material and selling it on the open market, uh, especially given the relative secrecy that the governor and the general seem to to have surrounding these mining camps. Yeah, you're right. The secrecy is very, very weird. But the thing is, they can do that. The th- selling is weird, I understand. And I, I, I'll give you that. But well, the thing is, we don't have anything against them harvesting trilithium unless this is actually doing something else, another side effect. 
because just investigating their their weapon facilities for investigating the weapon facilities this could sound like a, a really weird move on part of the federation you understand my point commander oh this is what i've been looking forward to yeah <laughs> we're gonna have a little tiny bit of conflict um so uh sovak he doesn't raise his voice he's a vulcan he has he has a little bit of control but i mean you can tell when a vulcan is slightly miffed at somebody and he uh he says um Captain, yes, I agree. They do obviously have the freedom to to do with their planet as they please and mine the materials that they wish to. Uh, however, we also then also have the the uh, freedom to to see what they're doing with this. Um, nothing with what I'm proposing is is against the law or against protocol. Um, merely tracking a dangerous shipment of materials. You understand that I have to hail their government about this. If the material is being used for nefarious purposes, Captain, I could see that being a mistake, um, especially as we have learned down here that the mines are apparently being sanctioned by the government. Well, the issue, Commander, and I use Commander because you understand the gravity of this situation, is mm -hmm. that you have not presented me enough evidence to believe that what they're doing is nefarious. Because just mining tray lithium and starting the R is not a problem. One has to assume, one, one has to take into account the motive. And from what I can see on the ground, Captain, and he, he has a little bit of edge to the word Captain. Um, from what I can see on the ground here, Captain, after speaking personally with the governor, something is very amiss with these mining operations. The government is mining a dangerous material. They were reluctant to inform us of that fact. This material could potentially be dangerous for the civilians on this planet and potentially for others um, in the surrounding sector when they are selling this material to actors that may not be as noble as the Federation. And okay, uh, just, just, just for drama's sake, let's say, since I said I walked off camera during this, I'm obviously not off camera now, but I want uh, the two lieutenants to overhear this. Sure. Um, and the lieutenants are, are overhearing my words as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe. Um, I would like to have uh, the canner uh, kind of like mouth rare form to uh, to the commander because I believe that it's it might be a form of the trilithium that the Federation is not familiar with. And so it could have even more unexpected uh, uses. Yep. And then I will relay that appropriately. Rare form. Huh. Do you have any any more information about this rare form that we can consult on our databases? Because okay, now things are starting to get weird. Because trilithium, for trilithium's sake, is it's not a controlled substance, as far as I know. Can we? Um, are we able to to take a scan with the tricorder of the of the contents of the barrels and send it up to Kangoot? Yeah, you could do that very easily for you to do. Okay, uh, Lieutenant Slal, if you could uh, take the scan and send it up to the ship. I just scan of the ore and the resin. There might be a difference. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Very good point, Lieutenant. Okay. And I would just say thanks for the thanks for the information, Sovak. Uh, you can proceed. Just keep in mind the Prime Directive. Of course, Captain. That is always on my mind. Can go out. So walk out. All right. Now my question is: Is the captain still going to contact the governor, or uh, I will run the information by the science lab before contacting the government? Uh, so before we go to break, I do have one very important scene that we need to handle with the other away team. <sighs> Uh, so at this point, uh, Pugal, Chaudhry, Talkath, you're sort of looking at your overturned shuttle and thinking, well, how can this get any worse uh, when all of you now need to roll me a fitness medicine difficulty of two? Oh, great. Okay. Don't tempt Murphy. Fitness. Oh, here goes nothing. Uh. All right, so Chaudhry fails. I'm going to spend a momentum for Pugal. Okay. Actually, yeah, I'll spend a momentum for Tolkaf as well. Okay. Because he's definitely going to fail. 
Oh, no, quick, all is fine. Roll 20 question real quick. Can we, since the momentum is a share pool, can everybody like access everybody's momentum? Because I've been holding onto this and I don't need it. So you guys can take it. Uh, yeah, we can. We can. We can yeah, you should cards. be able to, to take from one another. The command is steal. <laughs> okay. Oh, I forgot to dirt, but well. Uh, uh, wouldn't have been a crit. You're fine. Yeah. Uh, ooh. All right. 19. Close. Uh, so, uh, Pugal, Talcath, you guys are fine. Chaudry, on the other hand, um, let's say that Chaudry's starting to see red. There is a lot of agitation in Chaudry's demeanor. And the more time you look at the shuttle, the more you start to feel a rage coming over you. And that rage oh. is not just directed at the shuttle, but at your crewmates as well. Oh boy. Yeah, start kind of like giving them like snide comments, like, God, haven't you fixed this yet? We've been here for, I mean, how long have we been here? I mean, uh, how hard could this be? I, I don't have the strength to turn this shuttle unless you want to help me. Now, come down, please. I'm not, okay. I don't think you're realizing what situation we are in. We are on a murder beast. We are, <laughs> we don't have a shuttle. And also not only do we not have, uh, actually we do have a shuttle, but it's not working. And I mean, if this thing continues moving, I mean, the shuttle is gonna fall off and we, we don't even have a shuttle anymore. We won't have a shuttle to fix. <laughs> Uh, uh, Ensign, please, for a moment. Lieutenant Pugal, can we at least get the thrusters online? If we get the thrusters, we can use the power of the thrusters to right the ship, right the ship back to where, the way it was. Uh, can uh, so can I, can, can I get the thrusters online, even if, if the shuttle is upside down? It's going to be difficult, but it is possible. I thought that's what the uh, engineering task was, fixing the uh, thruster. No, this was just assessing the damage. Oh, even worse. <laughs> uh, okay. You're, you're in charge, Commander. Uh, you're in charge, Lieutenant. Then me, I'll, no, I'll work. I'll, I'll let me help you out with this. Let me help you out with this. Yeah, I, I will go to the starboard nacelle and try to fix it. Sita, can you Hold the shuttle on the ground, at least. Fine. All right. So, Pugal, this whole process of getting the thrusters on the shuttle to work again, so that you could basically right the shuttle and maybe get off this beast's back, it's going to be a difficulty of four. It's going to be a daring engineering and I'll spend a little bit of threat here to keep things interesting. The complication range is 18 to 20. You may be assisted by one other person, and they would also be rolling a daring and an engineering. Uh, uh, my daring engineering is a 12. Uh, go ahead. Don't think of numbers. It's definitely you, because Sita is... Holding yeah, I'm not shadow. Well, spending that momentum to help out on the assist. So 2d20 uh, for the assist. You actually no, no, can't. cannot spend momentum when you're assisting. Fuck. The All assist right. can only roll the one. Go All ahead. Right. Roll, roll, roll your die. Roll your die. Trust. Trust your crewmates. That's less than uh, one what of the computers inside. come into this? Mm, I'll let it happen. Okay. Oh, hey, that's a one. That's that's one success. So just we need just to get need three more. Uh, sorry, I was looking for the tab, and so she does not have anything related to the termination. So, oh, two successes. You we need, need three more. Okay. Three more successes. Oh boy. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Wait, how do I take this out? Okay. Uh, do I spend? Yeah. I'm gonna spend the, the, the focus. If if you guys can help me just delete. Yeah, so everybody's gonna be spending their full momentum, I gotcha. So it's daring engineering. Mm -hmm. Four dice. And let's hope. Ooh, oh, nice. oh, 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 oh. So that is uh, six successes. So you actually get to keep the two momentum that you have. So yeah, uh, good news. You are able to get the thrusters working. Uh, and you are able to get the shuttle to sort of push up off the ground, flip over midair, and land back down again. Oh, yeah, easy, 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 easy. And with the shuttle still on and floating, hop on, people. We need to leave this very yes, quick. Yes, we are leaving right now. <laughs> all right. And not a moment too soon, because as you all hop off of the creature's back and into the shuttle, uh, what you're noticing is that this entire time, the water level has been rising on the beast. And <sighs> when you hop into the shuttle, uh, maybe about two minutes later, the entire back of the beast, save the blowhole, has been submerged. Damn. But it is with that that we are going to take our 10-minute break. So we will be back okay. in 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around. All right.
Alright, and welcome back to part two of session two of Star Trek and Gut. Uh, we're actually going to cut to the bridge where Captain, a yeoman, has just brought you a pad containing the information that you had run past the computer. And it has been assembled in such a way that uh, you can roll me a Insight Science difficulty of zero. So you're going to understand it either way, but this could get you memento. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my Insight Science is not that bad. Oh, and is Xenanthropology applicable? Sure. Hey, so you get a momentum. So, okay. Captain, your away teams are either back on the ship at this point or in the process of coming back. But what you're realizing is as you look at this pad, something that they wouldn't have known individually, but something you're now realizing that you have all the information, the crystal that is in the beast's head is the same trilithium that has been mined. Hmm. So, okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Yoman. And I'm going to read this information again, and I'm going to... Computer, what was the substance again in the in the later in the last reported occurrence of these rock beasts? The one instance with Harry Mudd. No trilithium present in B sample. But the love potion, what was it again? Pheromone pro pheromone compound used for control purposes, not trilithium based. Okay, so how is this happening? Well, now we, I'm gonna, uh, just a second. Is Sovok still on the, on the mines? I say at this not? point that uh, Sovok and the rest of the, his away team can walk onto the bridge. Mm-hmm. You are muted, Savak. Oh, Captain? Commander? Savak, so you found some trilithium there. And apparently the crystal on the head of the beast is trilithium as well. Interesting. The odds of this rare element being in both places at once is uh, are very very slim, Captain. Uh, was the were the ship sensors able to track the trilithium shipment? And you look at your pad again. Yes, they were. Half of the shipment is going to what is essentially a space elevator, so probably normal trading. The other half of the shipment is going to a facility on the far side of the planet. You don't know what the facility is, you just know that the aircraft has flown in that direction and made about two trips by now. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems that your suspicions were correct, Sovak. Sovak straightens uh, up a little bit in his chair. doesn't say anything, he just... The... The trilithium is being brought to a facility on the other side of the planet. Thing is, we could try to figure out what ha what's happening there, or we could confront the government head on with this information. And that's the thing that I'm not sure about. Hmm. Captain, one has to assume that confronting the government with this information could result in uh, any degree of deniability on their part. Um, perhaps if we had some sort of 
more concrete proof as to what this facility is and what they're doing, then at that point we can we can say that if uh, if their purposes are nefarious, we can theoretically take this to the Federation. Federation or not, uh, Starfleet doesn't take kindly on weapons trading. Well, you're correct on that. If if it were just the crystal, then that's fine. The thing is, the big issue is the weapons. So, especially since they are inside the Federation, let's let's try to raid that facility. Then, not not raid, but investigate that facility. And so about then, the tall cat walks on. Uh, Lute, Captain, we managed to attain a sample of, of the pheromone for directly from the beast itself. And I pull out the vial. We can go ahead and use it to synthesize some sort of antidote, but it would have to be very copious amounts for a beast at large. Well, please don't don't open this around me. I think. Well, I'll call Yeoman. Can you please bring this to the science lab and run some tests on this? Yes, Try Captain. to. I, I think you, Tolkath, I think you're going to be, be helpful on the next. No, actually. Go ahead. Go to the science lab. Oh, um, also, uh, Ensign Chaudhry needs, needs some medical attention as well. Uh, she has had she she's had exposure, and I think it has is starting to affect her somewhat. Okay, yeah. Well, I think Doctor Namdi Kokoro can take care of her, while you can try to work on the on the substance. And the Sir Captain, how get to work? Aye. aye. Big kind of like she's been like kind of standing around in the background, but mm -hmm. she kind of walks up towards uh, the captain and says, "May I? I think that. Well, if I could be frank, I think that if we do not confront the government, and it turns out all of this is perfectly. I mean, we have to see all sides to this." If they're found to be not doing anything illegal or weapons trading or anything, all of this is legitimate. And we are found to be kind of sneaking around on the planet uh, doing intel missions without the local government's permission. That might uh, be a bad look for us. Thanks for the, for the alternate view. Fig, it's it's really appreciated. But if it comes to that, I'll just have to talk our way out of this. It's not a big issue. It's just diplomacy. And as long as we don't do anything, we just observe and take notes and study the situation. I'm sure it's fine. And we have even have some some kind of link between the beast and their mining facilities, because apparently the trilithium in the facilities is the same trilithium on the head of the beast. So we, we have an excuse. I, 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 I can, I think I can, can live with that. All right, Captain. Trust me, Fig. I try, I try. <laughs> I'm glad you do. Um, with that, I think Sita is in sick bay. So, who was manning the? Oh, the Kenner went to. Oh, the Kenner is is manning the helm. Mm -hmm. So, the Kenner, can you bring us closer to that facility? Not mm -hmm. that close, but. On the same side of the planet. Away. No, no, but uh, far away enough that a shuttle can reach it easily. 
Uh, and we can get there fast. But I don't want to alert anyone what to, to, to what we're doing. Are we still in atmosphere, by the way? Uh, no, no. The Gangut has climbed back to low or low orbit. Um, I'm crazy, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't think uh, that should be an issue, Captain. Let's uh, let's give it a go. Right. Um, so what am I rolling, or do I need to roll? Nah, no roll required. Okay. Uh, however, I will spend some threat here that as the Gengut begins to move towards the facility, um, you maybe get about halfway around the planet when you are detecting a weapons lock coming from ground-based installations circling this facility. Uh, and that's something that I see, or is that... Red alert. That is something that the canner sees and would automatically trigger a red alert. Okay. Uh, Captain, we've got a uh, weapons lock from a uh, from uh, some... Uh, they seem to be uh, surrounding the, uh, the facility. Okay. Um... Let's move away from the range. <clears throat> if we, if we, I'm going to turn to Commander Sovak. Do you want to try and infiltrate this facility from the ground or would you rather contact the government? Captain, at this point, they have assumed an aggressive posture. Um, I, I don't think that a ground raid is prudent at this time, but I do believe now we have the smoking gun, as the humans put it, uh, that we were looking for. Um, something is indeed afoot, and a threatening to attack a Starfleet vessel is no, no small issue. I like to hear your opinion, Commander. So I want to hail the government. Okay. Who are you contacting specifically? I I am contacting Trumshe. Trumshe. All right. Let's so because it might become relevant, we're going to very briefly look at Talcath in the science lab. Okay. And uh, Talcath, uh, you're working with this pheromone sample. And I'd like you, for sake of argument, to roll me either a control science or a control medicine at a difficulty of three. Control science, control medicine. Oh, control medicine. Uh, spend. Uh, spend. A, could I spend the three momentum to get two more d20? Sure. Uh, Deca, you have to the yeah, two momentum. Yeah, we can use them ourselves. We okay. You, you can click on hits. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. So control medicine. Mm -hmm. So that puts me at 40, 20, right? Yep. Do I have anything in the talents area that might help? Nope. Okay. Nope. Hey, four successes. You get a momentum back. Cool. So I'm not going to say good news, bad news again. But, <laughs> um, Worst news, great news. Well, something to that effect. You realize some very important things. And those very important things are that, first of all, it appears that, you know, originally the pheromone might have been from Harry Mudd's quote unquote love potion. And that was your first instinct was, oh, they're just using the same sort of pheromone control. And maybe that is still happening to some degree, but the sample of the pheromones that you took from the creature's back, it's not the same pheromone. It's almost as if the creature is producing its own sort of, for lack of a better word, musk, its own scent. Interesting. Is it possible to try and counteract it? 
Uh, I would say since sense. you are science officer, you can ans ask that question for free. And yes, the answer is that it is very easy to more or less uh, control the creature or subdue it more or less. Um, how to put this? At this point, you're starting to connect the dots. And you're realizing that it's too convenient based on the timeline for the creature to have responded in the way it did, if I'm making any sense. Meaning that the way you arrived on the planet and what the creature has exhibited, there's something you're not getting here. Something is amiss. And there's just, there's a link between its natural pheromones and the supposed pheromones that are controlling it that you're just not, there's there's something missing there. Okay. So some sort of component that we, that either man-made or natural that is not linking, that has to link these two together that we don't have yet. Correct. Okay. Then I will go ahead and return back to the bridge. Okay. And we'll say for sake of argument, if you want to just tell the captain everything, you certainly may. Yes, I'll do that. So, Captain, um, between what is supposedly being used to control this creature and what is actually being used, uh, there's, some, there's something that's connecting the two instances, but I cannot make that determination just yet. It could be something natural. It could be something that's man-made without a little bit more evidence, unfortunately. We will need something to connect these two together in order to make something that, that is viable to, to subdue it. Okay. That's, that's good information, Lieutenant. And it's right about then that the comms officer says, I have Governor Tarumshe ready for you, sir. <clears throat> but for now, we know nothing. On screen. Right. Appearing on screen is, of course, the red-hued Saurian, Governor Tarumshe. And they sort of look at you, Captain, and say, uh, Captain, uh, what uh, have you made any progress on the whole Rockby situation? Yes, yes, actually, we have made some progress. We have tracked the beast, and it's returning back to the sea. And That's good news. Yes, but it may attack again. And from our calculations, we have done dump some triangulations, you see some mathematics. And we estimated that the beast trajectory or their ultimate goal was towards a mining facility in your planet. And we have gone there and investigated the mining facility. And I realized that the mining facility apparently mines trilithium, a highly unstable material. And they could not explain what, exactly what they were doing with it. So what's that facility's purpose? And just so that we're all on the same page, you're asking the one that you tried to approach and they basically warned you off, right? Yes. Um, so the governor looks a little confused and says, well, as far as I know, there's nothing illegal about selling trilithium, uh, but the facility you speak of, I can't say that I know anything about it. Okay, so you know nothing about the trilithium, trilithium operations of your planet? No, I think that we're mining it and selling it, but it's all under Starfleet regs. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, 
So why does half of your shipment go towards a military facility on the other side of the planet that lock targets on us, Governor? Their eyes sort of narrow. Uh, I honestly don't know, Captain. Uh, as I said, this facility you speak of is not something I know about. Okay. Thank you, Governor. I think I need to talk to Zotabia now, because from what I understand, you have no link to this entire situation. I'll, I'll take that into consideration. I'll see if I can't get the governor for you. And uh, the transmission cuts off, giving you guys a moment to process what just happened before the governor is raised. The, the general. Or the general, yes, yeah, sorry. So this operation is government sanctioned, but the governor... The mining not... operation is is government sanctioned, but the, mil but the facility that we flew to, she did not know about. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry for making this weird scene, people. I was trying to trick the governor into saying something else, but she did not bait. Bite. This, I think the main issue is that contacting Zotabia directly is, is a hard sell. Is a hard sell, because on, on one hand, he controls that that military facility because he's the military general on this planet. On the other, he might be an environmentalist who's probably attacking that same facility. He could also try to start some unrest to further his own militaristic agenda. Captain, may we also remind uh, everybody involved that the general used to be a member of an organization called, uh, and I quote, and he, he leans over the console and looks at his readout, destroy all cities. That's a little too on the nose for me, but I can say that I... If I can interject real quick. Talcath, now that they've said that, the pieces click. It's something in your database, something that the Gangut's computers would have, you know, spat out as like auxiliary information, but it's the missing puzzle piece. The control mechanism is similar to one that Destroy All Cities, DAC, has used in the past. You are muted, by the way. Yes, uh, Captain. I think I may. I think I may have found our link. Go ahead. I believe that the whatever control mechanism the D, the DAC is using, might be might might be the link between this pheromone and what the creatures naturally naturally playing out. So, so the DAC, the terrorist organization, the general was part of, is somewhat linked to this creature. So we can assume that the general is behind these attacks. Either that or the entire, or either that or something within the organization itself. Possibly the gen, possibly the general, maybe at the tip of the iceberg of what we're looking at here. I would like okay. to offer the uh, the idea that the general does not necessarily have to be responsible for this, as we only know that this was in the general's past. We don't know if he is now working against them. We also do know, like, didn't we mention also when we went into the briefing last time at the end that, like, the DAC itself doesn't necessarily have a presence on the planet, but, like, this 
wasn't there like a like a temple or something that was involved with them like some kind of movement that they belonged to that had a presence on this planet yeah so basically there is destroy all cities which is an offshoot of what is essentially a movement uh in the Saryan culture to i don't want to say to be like the amish but it, it does sort of fall the same way that they're basically trying to be the Saryan equivalent of the Amish, you know, reject technology, live natural, you know, live with nature, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was, uh, it was, I have a, a sect that was stringent, stringently opposed to colonization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to find the name of it in my notes, but I am just not finding it right now, but yeah, I you are I don't think it comes fast enough to type it down. Uh, so you're somewhere. By the way, you know that they are linked in some way, is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the general, we assume the general is behind his attacks, but the general, as the head of the military, is also in charge of the, of the facility that mines trading, which is... I'd say possibly the most polluting thing in the planet going on at the moment. And I'd say the Stryo cities would not be happy about this. So do we know ahead of the Stryo cities in the, in the planet, the, re, the system? Can, can we know that? You're, you're talking about, uh, do we have information on the uh, leader of the current branch yeah, here database or something yeah do we, do we have any information on the Stryo cities apart on current members or are they like stealth operations and stealth operations unfortunately okay also i found it it is the untainted is what they the are untainted. an offshoot of and general otavia was only part of destroy all cities but the untainted was the sect that was against uh, colonization, or is it reverse? Uh, it's the reverse. It's destroy all cities that is against uh, colonization. Um, but the actual untainted believe that they should only rely on their natural abilities instead of technology. And that, again, the Amish analog where civilization shouldn't disrupt the planet's natural ecology. Captain, if I may, regardless of whether or not the general is the one uh, who is who is orchestrating these series of events, um, it is clear that the government of this planet, the civilian government of this planet, has a security issue. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I I agree, Solvok. But I believe. Trumshe, it's not Trumshe, Zotabia, the general, might not be happy with the mining operations. And I think I know what to do. I want to call Zotabia on an encrypted connection. Okay. Do you want this to happen on the bridge or in your ready room? My ready room. Your ready room. All right. Commander. Captain, and do I wait? I follow, right? Is that what you're you're wanting? Okay. okay. Uh, Lieutenant uh, Talcath, you have the bridge. Uh, yes, sir. So, so uh, and the captain. All right. So you all, both of you, step into the captain's ready room. Have a moment before uh, Zotabia is on the line. Uh, Commander, I I think I'll try to make allies with Zotabia. Say, try to attack the military facility operations and condemn the mines. Mm. Just Captain. our standard procedure. What if it turns out that the general is uh, that that is not the general's motive? I have a feeling that it is. But follow my lead. 
Of course. Sure enough, all you have to do is uh, push a button, and uh, on your little screen on your desk, uh, General Zotabia appears upon it. They don't look too happy. They look a little disgruntled. Uh, but they say, Captain, can I do for you? Hello, General. I, As you know, we have been investigating the situation that's going on in our planet. And I understand you're not happy with out, outsiders messing in our business. But I believe we have found some informations that are very interesting for you, at least. Uh, I have, we have tracked down the beasts, as I said, the, we have extrapolated the beast's path and apparently it was headed or it had some relation with the mining facilities in our planet. And those same mining facilities sent shipments to a military base on the other side. And when we approached it, the military base locked targets on us. And that made, made me worry a bit because I believe you're not as welcoming as I hope. But the thing is, that mining facility is possibly harming the environment. And I know Starfleet doesn't have regulations for that, but personally, I care very much about the environment. And I believe that's something you possibly need to, to take into consideration. And from what I heard, from what I read, you were a person that, like, sorry, you were a person that respects the environment as well. How do you feel about this, that facility destroying our planet? I'd like you to roll me a presence command. I will spend my remaining threat. Let's make this a difficulty of five. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Presence Command, difficulty of five. Might want to spend a termination here. Yeah, I just want to know if Commander Sovak can help me. If you tell me how Sovak is assisting. I'm, I'm blanking on it uh, as to how I can jump in on that. Unless, unless you have an idea. <laughs> I always have an idea. It's just whether or not you'd go for it. Um, my thought is that... Uh, you're, of course, you know, looks not like behind him or like looking over his shoulder, but maybe you're running a behavioral analysis through the ship's computer as he's talking. And I would say you could do a insight and uh, insight and command for Sobak as an assist. Just to sort of uh, like have the computer and I guess myself to like. I don't know, analyze his face patterns or something like to see how, if he's reacting genuinely. Right. Yeah. Duplicate yep. the screen and you're like mind melding to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Switching out. Uh, yeah, I can do that. You said insight command? Insight command for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's not great. <laughs> I'm definitely going to spend my determination. Okay. What value are you tapping? <sighs> Communication is the most powerful weapon. I like it. So that'll give you two free successes to start with. Can uh, so I think an assess an assist doesn't let you use values, but I can still have a focus. Right? Yeah. You still uh, can have a focus. Yeah. Would diplomacy matter? Because that's reading facial. I give expression. you diplomacy. Yeah. So it's only one d twenty. Correct. Uh, yep. And I'm stealing the momentum from Tolkath Ed and. Oh. Ooh, complication. Interesting. Okay. All right. And spending it. To get three dice. And can I apply diplomacy as yeah. well? Yeah, diplomacy would apply here. Okay, so it's presence plus command, three dice, and yes, I do have a focus. All right, well, oh, with uh, your determination spend, that is a grand total of six successes, which means you do get a point of momentum. And we're going to keep that complication because I find it interesting. 
So the general, there's a definite pause as they take in your words and eventually they say, Captain, I will level with you. I don't think the Saurians should be here. And I don't say that as, shall we say, political activist. I mean simply that Saurians should not be anywhere besides the home world. And I had to make that, shall we say, apparent to those who could not see the harm that we're doing. Uh, before I answer, mm -hmm. I want to use my talent code reading because mm -hmm. apparently I succeeded in a so social interaction. Mm -hmm. And I want to use my free momentum to ask a question. Sure. What's the question? Okay. Um, can I tell from his behavior? that the government is definitely behind the military base and whatnot. I would say based on what he said so far in response to you, mm -hmm. not only is he not working with the government, but destroy all cities, DAC is behind the facility, which you already suspected. Mm-hmm. But he's more or less confirmed it by his choice of words. Okay. Meaning that they are not associated with the government proper. And they is the Stereo cities in general, but not the military entire, the entire military. Not the entire military, correct. But this general is. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay. You, you wanna you wanna make some sign language to me? No, I was wondering if if Sovak hits the record button on on this encrypted communication. You probably could. It's just a button push. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm I'm just wondering. Yeah, I do it. I do it. Okay. Uh, general, I understand your. I understand your concerns, and I have to say that I share them. But the thing is, the method of approach is very relevant as well. The way you're doing, you're jeopardizing innocent civilians. So that's not the answer. Have you tried going through Govern the regular ways, candidating we, to government? Of course, we've tried different ways to get people to return to Saria. Specifically for this planet, though, we blew up two trilithium mines already. I was hoping the third would go as well. But when that didn't work, we had to do something a little creative. It is a very dramatic situation, I'll give you that. But I'm sure you understand the position you put me in. Because what I hope was understanding and what I got was ignorance instead. There's no so, reply. He just continues to stare at you. Mm -hmm. General, I believe you have to seize your operations and join me, and we can try to find a different solution to your issues. I don't believe anti uh, removing the colonies will be feasible, but at least reducing the environmental impact on this planet 
might. I think the Federation can help on that regard. You have to start trusting us. Roll me another presence command, difficulty of four this time. Damn. I have, I have, oh, I spent a determination. I have to, to roll the Yeah, you do have to dice. roll a challenge die to see if you get that determination back. All right, unfortunately, you don't. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to spend the last focus, the last momentum. Mm -hmm. Can can I assist again if I just pipe in and say, uh, sort of, I'm addressing it to to the general, but I'm, I'm really saying to the captain, um, Captain, there are 8 million people on this planet, as a reminder. And uh, any further violence only risks their lives. And so I'm, I'm saying that to the captain, but I want that to sink in a little bit with, with uh, the general. And is that enough to let me assist? Yeah, I would say you could assist with your own presence command. All right, there's one success. Ooh, interesting. Mm. Yeah, I would say that unfortunately, unless you want to challenge a value to get a point of determination, would, which would let you re-roll. Would it be able for them to succeed with cost? Not in this instance, unfortunately. Um, uh, the captain is a veteran, right? He did already roll for the, the challenge die, yeah. He did not get it back. Oh, okay. That's what that is. Okay, I, I was, I was. Oh, I'm thinking of uh, untapped potential, where you can re-roll if you spent momentum. Mm -hmm. I think I want to challenge a value then. Okay, what value? Ancestrality has to be preserved. Okay. In the means that they, they, the the DAC pretty much represents like the ancestral community culture of the Saurians and that mm -hmm. they should remain in their roots and I'm gonna challenge that and kind of disagree with them wholeheartedly. Okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna cross out that value and you're gonna put in a new one at the end of the session but for the purposes of this role you get a point of determination and at this point, you can choose to re-roll those two zeros if you so wish, but you technically can re-roll all three if you so wished. Probably say keep that success that you currently have right now and just re-roll the other you, two. Because you just need one more, right? Or was it of difficulty four? Two more. Two more, yeah. So I'm gonna re-roll just the two other dice. Okay. Ooh, you get the two successes you need. So the general uh, capitulates and says, very well, we will stop production of the pheromones that we were using to control the rock beasts, and we will disarm the trilithium warheads that we have implanted into their cranial regions. I'm not going to be surprised. I'm going to save face. Right, right, right. <laughs> And the general sort of sighs deeply and says, I suppose I am at your mercy, Captain. Where we go from here is up to you. You see, my experience has taught me that with a little bit of understanding and communication, help can go a long way. I think we can try to articulate the possibly the Ministry of um, um, Environment. Is that something like this here? And the Ministry of Environment and Preservation. And challenge Trumshe about this. Federation can surely provide a few scientists that will survey the area, make some some assessments, try to figure out how much 
this mining is actually impacting the planet and how they can actually change this, this situation and possibly find a different source of income for the, for this colony. That would be much appreciated. We can talk about it. You can expect us to, to uh, I'll beam you uh, a few escorts, uh, li liaisons that will start the, the surveying processes with your people assistance, if that's possible. We'll be in touch. Thank you, General. And yeah, unless uh, you keep him on the line any longer, uh, that no. is where he cuts the communication. So Vox stops the recording. <laughs> Captain, uh, that went very well <laughs> um, in, in my estimation. However, um, we do have a confession to two acts of terrorism on this planet to very large explosions. Regardless of, of the peaceful outcome of the situation, the general must still face justice. Uh, yes. And this is this is I me know. being by the book. I know, Savak. I know. I know. I understand, and that's the that's the main issue. I believe in what I said. You see, Savok, I do think they need help. And I, 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 I think you, 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 I think you agree with me. Yes. Yes, I do. So instead of scaring them, now that we have opened the line of communication, we need to apprehend the general, but I'm not sure that it should be definitely tried. Because Captain, if, if, if I may, the decision on whether or not somebody is tried for a crime is, is not up to us. That is up to the civilian government. Yes, I, I understand, but we need to assure that he has a fair trial, not a spectacle, not something to prove a point. We need to touch the government and make the government understand the severity of the situation. And then we deliver general. And might I recommend the Gangoot remain on station for a while to act as neutral arbiters between the general and the government to ensure fairness. And after that, what happens to the general is up to the civilians. Yes. Yes, I completely agree. Right. And it is with that, that, uh, you know, the quote unquote camera pulls out of one of the windows of the ready room and we see an exterior shot of the Gangut as it remains over the planet of Riku. And that is sort of the end of the session. So what did you guys think? Was it, uh, I know it was a little bit haphazard there and how it played out, but I think it went pretty well, all things considered. No, I thought it went well. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. It was nice to, to have more like, I mean, now that we've got our second session under us to have a little bit more like actual diving into roles and stuff like <laughs> R-O-L-E roles, not yep. R -O -L -L. <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, that was great. I'm, I was totally expecting the uh, like, uh, the, um, the 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 weapon lock on to uh, to not uh, disengage when we went off and we had to go in to uh, to do something. Honestly, had you guys failed those presence commands versus the general, I think the general would have opened fire. Oh God! Yeah, that was that was some fantastic rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I built my character for that, so hopefully that works. Mm -hmm. The rolling was like somehow as intense as like that situation would have been in real life. <laughs> I mean, I was like holding on to my seat. <laughs> cool. And some really tough choices because yep. I'm still yeah. not sure what to do. I hope the negotiations go on fine. 
and they I hope I didn't play too risky with the rock beast. <laughs> and you were fine. In fact, I I deliberately designed that scene because I wanted to give you a little bit of a way team experience. So expect more things like that where I'll throw one of your characters uh, with supporting characters just to see what you'll do, kind of a thing. <laughs> All right. I, I, I actually like that that structure of sending one of the lower ranked officers with a lot of you know ensigns mm -hmm. <laughs> and let them command. Yeah. Uh, I think the main thing is we need to iron out uh, the the, the uh, we need to iron out more uh, supporting characters mm -hmm. just so that there is that option of oh, I built this character and I'm not going to be in that scene, so I'm going to play that character. Right. Like right. We, we, need to, we need to definitely focus on that. Also, um, I, I don't know if anybody else was doing this too, but for, for Chowdhury, like when, when um, Slaw was role-playing her, I made a note on her character sheet too because she mentioned she was good at, at mountain, mountain climbing. climbing. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so uh, maybe we can, we can build out a little bit of backstory on some of those guys too. Yeah, because I didn't see a lot of like values on my character, so I sort of like spitballed it. No, I mean, and that's perfectly fine. In fact, I encourage that sort of thing. So, uh, but this is where I'm going to kill the stream. So, Twitch, YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. We will hopefully see these lovely people next week. Bye, yep. stream.